screen. All right, we back in. Hey, can y'all let me know if y'all can hear it clearly? Hey, somebody let, let me know if y'all can hear us clear. Because I'm just talking and, and, and nobody can even hear. Y'all can hear? All right, cool. All right, so I said a bunch of stuff. I probably have to go back over. All right, so the basis of this live is I'm talking about twin flame relationships, talking about being vulnerable, talking about things that I've struggled with in my relationship and what I've learned. Cause that's all it's about. You feel what you feel what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you for letting us know. Appreciate that. That's what it's all about. It's about growing. Now, my experience in in my relationship with my queen has been a twin flame relationship. Something that I never could fully say that I understood what it was until I actually went through it. It's a real thing. Like literally. In this relationship, I couldn't hide if I wanted to. This woman is literally the other half of my soul. A twin flame relationship, you're literally one soul that has split into two. It could be, it don't matter what's going on. She'll have a dream about it. She'll know about it. She'll, something will happen. Body, pain. Body pains. Accidentally, she'll say something that triggers me to goddamn tell on myself. You know what I mean? Because as a man, it's like we're wounded in our ego. So you never want to be perceived in any way that f makes you feel like you're less of a man. You know, you know what I'm saying? Based on how we identify as men in this, uh, this physical realm and this physical illusion. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to say no names, but that's why us as men, we, we spiral down so hard. It, we can be so hard-headed because we just want to hold on so much. Come out. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Hmm. But on a serious note, I want to give a moment of silence for, for loyal. Seriously. A moment of silence for loyal, man. Peace, bro. She was never truly honored online. Not by the team, not by none of his so-called brothers or sisters, not by none of that. Because y'all feel like his darkness is more darker than y'all, but darkness is darkness, baby. It's constant. So, yeah. Shout out to Loyal. Rest in peace. Shout out to Loyal. For real. For real, bro. Loyal used to, bro, bro, he used to push me. You know what I mean? He used to get on my nerves sometimes, but but he always, he had a good heart. You know what I mean? He he, has, he really had a good soul. Just led in the, you know, wrong direction. But he was running, he was led in his direction, and, and essentially, he was met with himself. You know, in all sensitivity to what happened, you know, he was led to himself. And sometimes that happens in life. You know what I mean? He, he was a wild card like that. You know what I mean? We would be out and he would be trying to get me to do something. We would be out shooting music videos. He's like, yo, bro, let's go shoot some music videos. And I'm like, all right, all right, come on. He's like, nah, bro, you got to record this track. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And we'll go out to the, the beach or something. They got a, a abandoned building that's off limits for, it's a turtle sanctuary or something. He's trying to go inside the turtle sanctuary. I'm like, bro. It has signs on the building that says, don't go inside the turtle sanctuary. But he's always just trying to push the boundaries. And he was fed up with a lot of the stuff in this realm. He just wanted to try so much, you know. He was very curious. You know what I mean? So, rest in peace, rest in power to loyal. You know what I mean? And, you know, he lives on through us. And we take we take the, the light that we can from the situation and we honor him through just doing that. You know, he, what was he known for? What was he, his legacy left? He was proclaiming. You know what I mean? Take the truth for what he was proclaiming and, and honor that and continue to push that forward. You feel what I'm saying? Because he was a good dude, man. He was a good dude, bro. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I love him. I loved him. You know, he was hitting me up even right, and right before he passed. Yeah, he hit me up, you know? And I was like, bro, I ain't, I ain't trying to be on what y'all trying to be on. You know what I mean? I, I disassociated myself for a reason. You know, because Source showed me certain things in ways that I just couldn't explain at the time. I hadn't fully integrated with. 
You know, and there's certain people that had kind of caught that shift and started experiencing more of that magic. And that's something that can take you a little bit of time to integrate with. So back to what I was saying. Be vulnerable. I didn't get on this live to be long with it. I didn't get on this live to diss nobody. I know a lot of people often look for drama and entertainment when we get on live. And I love it. You know what I mean? I love I love entertainment. I love drama. I would love to, you know, maybe get more into that later. You know what I mean? It's always a time and a, and a space for everything. You know what I mean? It's a time and a space for everything. Trust me. We got a lot of... um this stuff on the way but yes so we're talking about our twin fun relationship my wife is coming out with a book called twin meets flame she just created a channel on our instagram page for anybody who's interested where she's releasing content from the book we're going to be getting very vulnerable very very vulnerable very exposing some of it could be triggering for people but for others it could be very or it will be very um, enlightening and cause a lot of growth because we've experienced tremendous growth in our relationship. And that's one thing that I feel like for myself has kept me from wanting to come on live because it's like, but right now I don't feel like I got nothing to say to nobody. You know what I'm saying? I'm working on myself. And don't get me wrong, proclaiming is always good. You always want to proclaim your truth and what you feel like you have to offer to people. But, you know, life is quantum. So you want to make sure that when you're speaking on something, that it's coming from a real space within you, something that you can really reflect on and know like, yo, I feel this, I learned this. I want to go and I, I now want to share this with people. So for me, my issue has been with vulnerability, not wanting to expose myself to my queen, even though she's always been here, been honest with me, been truthful with me. I mean, this woman has an impeccable character. My queen, she has an, an impeccable smile. Stop it. Oh, no. Nah. An impeccable character, truly. Truly what I, what I feel embodies daughter earth or character, daughter character, as Sister Mara would say, daughter character. And that's the morals and the principles. That's the earth that we have devalued over time. And that's what the woman, your woman represents. And so when you have a woman that embodies that, that reminds you of who you are, that gives you the knowledge in your weak times and can deal with your, your BS, then appreciate that at all times. You understand what I'm saying? Because what else do you have? As a man, what are you without your woman? What are you? And if you don't realize that you're nothing without your woman, well, you belong to the matrix. Because man and woman, that's the, the basis dynamic. That's divide and conquer. Without your woman, you're nothing. And, and for women, without your man, you're nothing. And so the system has allowed us to perpetuate this illusion to think that we can exist without each other. I don't exist outside of this woman. I only exist because of her. You understand? I only exist because of her. I only breathe because of her. And it, unless you get to a point like that, you will not experience true fulfillment in your relationships. It will be shallow. It will not reach full depths of vulnerability. And yo, you won't really get love. You'll be, you know, and it's funny because in the environment I was in, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. Hmm. Hold on, I was trying to see if this is non existent. You know what I mean? Let's talk about it. When I was in carbonation in the group, I seen a leader who tried to make women, tried to make them do what he wanted them to do. Do the right thing. You're trying to force, you try to, and I found that I haven't had to do any of that because this woman was made for me. She was made just from, well, she is me. She truly embodies what Hadu is. And what I do is for me. She's became everything that I've needed in the times that I've needed to heal myself and vice versa. And to me, that's the greatest treasure, the, the greatest gift that anybody can have in life. And we had a moment last night and it got a little hectic. You know what I mean? You know how it gets. And, you know, 
what I realized though is that through all of it, or all the hecticness or whatever, the vulnerability is what saves the relationship. The vulnerability is what opens the heart. The vulnerability is what allows you to feel and to be, to fill your heart space. As men, sometimes we lack compassion. Your woman is a master of compassion. She's water to fill. You understand what I'm saying? And, at, and in, in truth, at the basis of what we all are is purity. But we've gotten so far from that. So how do we expect to raise children? How do we expect to be examples to the world? You understand what I'm saying? Unless we can get to a basis of purity. Unless we can get back to that state of love, which is what we all are. Honey Chile, if you think it's some bullshit, get online and say something. Hop in the live. Say what you think is the right thing. You get on your channel and you go proclaim. You're on you're on our live calling this bullshit, but tell me what's bullshit about it. Mm, tell us how your reality is reflecting here you back to me from your actions. Exactly. And what space do you have to come on here and to judge that? I mean, all respect, you you can feel how you want to feel. At the end of the day, when I get off this live, I'm, I exist in my reality. And the reason I'm coming on here is because, yo, I feel like once I learn something, once you get something that's valuable, you just want to share it. And you are what you perceive. So this bullshit, you bullshit. It's that simple. It's simple. This woman has shown me what life is. And so I want to I want to get on here and I want to give my woman her flowers. I think a lot of times we wait till people die and loyal, you know, before we give them their flowers. And so I don't want to continue to perpetuate that. I don't want to continue to perpetuate what everybody has perpetuated from the place that I've come. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be looked as that. And I know that sometimes even my life is hard for people to understand. People say, what about your children? I don't have no children. And I know that's hard for people to understand. People may not like to hear that. But I've made it to a, a very different place in life. I've been shown things that a lot of people... If you experience them, you probably go crazy. A lot of people have, you know, and that's a whole, that's, we can talk about that later. That's not the basis of this live. Thank you, Life Press, I appreciate it. The point of me getting on this live is men. Be vulnerable with your woman. Be vulnerable with your wife. Tell her how you feel. Tell her what's on your mind because she can feel it. Especially if, she, if she's your woman. Don't make her or let her feel crazy for things that you're going through. Because she's going to pick it all up and she's going to feel it. Do not make her out to be anything less than what she is. Which is your earth. She becomes what you give her. She will give you that in return tenfold. And that's the truth. And so I think that's what people need to hear. My job is not necessarily to come on here and try to change people. But to change myself. Because through our relationship, we'll change the world. Through our children, we'll change the world. It's not about the views. It's not about the money. We're already rich. We're already abundant. I don't have to get on here and try to convince anybody. You understand what I'm saying? I, the way I live, the way we live is we're blessed. We're truly blessed. We're truly children of source. And, and for all of those out there that are truly children of source, that are experiencing the magic, that are choosing to be pure, choosing to maintain their purity, choosing to hold on to that silent whisper in the midst of the chaos in this world the bots babylon the drama everything are always going to be blessed you're always going to be blessed and so that's really the main thing i wanted to get on here and say man listen i haven't been perfect i've did a lot of things i've acted in ways that have allowed a lot of people to view me the way that they view me there's a reason why people get on here and they already have a preconceived notion of who and what I am. But, I mean, it is what it is. I made certain decisions. Certain things I did weren't always the best. I made mistakes. I'm not perfect. And I don't feel like I'm really no better than anybody else in the darkness that I allowed myself to perpetuate. But at a certain point, you got to give it up and release your ego and die and be reborn, be purified by the fire. And we're gonna go more in depth in that. My, my, my queen is coming out with a book, Twin Meets Flame. For anybody who's interested in relationship dynamics, 
You want to know if you're in a, a karmic tie. You want to know if you're in a, a twin flame, a, a soulmate relationship and what that means for you. And how to how, discern it. How to discern and how to navigate in it. Then you're going to want to join the channel. You're going to want to read the book. That's without a doubt. That's without a shadow of a doubt. You're going to gain a lot of clarity and enlightenment for your life. Exactly. You're not defined by your mistakes. You're defined by what you continue to do and perpetuate. You have a choice. So there's, there's people on this live right now. You got something you need to tell somebody in your life. Tell them. Don't be afraid. Don't allow fear to control you. Don't allow fear to be the reason why you silence yourself. Honor yourself. You will receive everything that is truly yours. You will. And this is coming from somebody who... Damn, let's call it a coach. Shit, I don't like to do that. I don't like to be a bandwagon nigga that and niggas feel like, oh, you left and you was in there and you called it. Shit was a coach, dog. It's, it, and it's crazy because I, I didn't want to accept it. You understand? I didn't want to accept what that was, but I feel like it, it is what it is. You know what I mean? There's good coats, there's bad coats. There's tribes, there's labels to put on it. Shit was bad. You understand what I'm saying? But there's good that comes out of everything. There's light that comes out of everything. And I feel like for everyone who was in the cult and carbonation or even found yourself like aligning yourself with it for any reason, um, a lot of the only reason that everyone was there, especially my husband, was because not for the knowledge, not for the truth, because that's not nothing that came of it. The truth was degenerate and there was no love really existent in that reality so the only thing that it even brought forth was the opportunity to see how far into your own shadows will you really take yourself how far will you allow yourself to be taken from yourself how far away from the god within you will you allow to the point where you're proclaiming god as somebody else whether it be jesus allah alihio it doesn't matter you are god and so the opportunity to be put in an environment just to see how far, how detrimental will you allow yourself to get off the strength of somebody who is already in their own detriment? And this does, this is constant across the board, even in relationships, which is why, which is what we're talking about. You know what I mean? And when it comes down to, especially a dynamic between a man and a woman, um, a, a, a tie, like he said, there's no running. There's no hiding. There's nowhere to fucking go. It's only you that exists. So we running, we're hiding, we're keeping secrets, but we're doing all of this to ourselves. We're keeping ourselves in a reality that we truly don't even want to exist in. And one thing that has been constant in our relationship is like, as my husband has struggled with his vulnerability, you know, it, it is, um, if you don't mind me getting honest, it is, a, it is played out through me, you know, through my body or through my dreams, you know, uh, nightmares. Um, we were just in the hospital the other day. I was bleeding like uncontrollably never seen that much blood on my body and this happened when we first got together as well um body pains uh just feelings of fear strike through my being you know and when we first got together a lot of the, i had learned that um you know this was his spirit communicating with me you know the man's spirit is going to become an ally with the woman's spirit and keep her updated on the progression of his ego because it's our job to uplift him in his ego if he's properly holistic within it so um yeah, when we first came together, you know, it became very apparent to me that, you know, he is speaking. You know, his soul is speaking to me to show me what I need to expose of him, to show me what expectations I need to hold him to. What talks do we need to have? What is on your mind? You understand? And um, it's crazy because as we, you know, separated, came back together, separated, came back together. And um, this time when we came back together, I allowed myself to think that I was crazy. You know, and this is something that a lot of women do, even when we were first together, you know, um, because of the wants, the long for the love, you know what I mean? We'll put up with anything. We'll put up with karma relationships and marry the person. We'll put up with a soulmate relationship and or a twin flame relationship and run away from the person all because of what we don't want to face. And so um, by the way my body was reacting, you know, it's just like I knew something was off. You know, I knew something was wrong. Everything is constant. I'm feeling the same things. But, you know, when your partner isn't ready to be vulnerable or be honest, you know, um, and you only want, it's like you only want, you want what they have to say to be, no, you know, there's nothing wrong, you know, so you allow yourself to believe what you want to believe, but you know, your internal only gets worse. It only starts to deteriorate more with your, with the truth that is being proclaimed, you know what I mean? That is really not true. And so it just got worse and worse and worse and, and, it, and it'll always get to that point. You know, there's, you got the individual and you got the collective, but 
just the only difference between the individual and the collective is the individual expresses itself in a different variation, but the collective is the same. You know, the problems are the same. The, the woman is wounded in her insecurity and the man is wounded in his ego. You know, so as he is going through his own wound within his ego um, and wanting more than he can even possibly have a right to or wanting more that doesn't even have anything to do with what he truly wants, you know, I allow that, I allow my insecurity to take that on. You know, I allow my, myself to deteriorate my own vision of myself and um, of him. You know, it just builds up resentment. It builds up fear. It builds up all the things that keep us out of our natural state of homeostasis, which is one with God. And um, when you're when you're in a dynamic as such, you know, you're one with God. Like he said, a twin flame dynamic is um, a soul before this physical realm that comes down and splits into two into the divine masculine, into the divine feminine. And um, you divide and conquer, you know what I mean? You, you you go out and you experience the wounds and the sins of the world and you come back together to purify and you will either descend or you will either transcend. And it's a very thin line, you know, because if you continue to think that um, anything is ours, our secrets, our shadows, our feelings, and we don't want to share them with the person that we claim to be sharing our life with, you're not gonna get anything that you really want. You know, you're gonna continue to live in a false reality and hoping and chasing for a grasping of the wind. Whether it's abundance, love, it doesn't matter. If you're not ready to actually identify and face and, and take on all that we have created, then you're not gonna be able to create anything outside of that, you know? That's real. That's real. That's what you said. So yeah, that's the gist and that's the wrap of really what we wanted to get on here and talk about. If anybody has any questions, feel free to, you know what I mean, tap in. But yeah, feel free to tap in. But that's really what I wanted to say. I really wanted to get on here and just proclaim some things that we've been learning because I feel like that's what we have to offer to the world. You know, we've been isolated for a while in ways that a lot of people I don't think could handle. You know what I mean? We don't go out a lot. We don't do a lot of things like... You know, we really stay within each other. And so that's allowed us to have this bond that's so, so, so deep. I mean, she's had dreams of things that I've hidden from her or whatever or tried to. And I'm like, I might not, I haven't said nothing at the time. You know what I mean? Everything's came out now. But at the time, I might not have said nothing. And I'm like, thinking in my head, like, oh, this shit's crazy. Like, and it's constant. You know what I mean? Like, for a whole year, like, so connected. It's like... Bro, this shit's crazy. I can't wait till we're able to release more and more and more what we've experienced in this twin flame relationship and dynamic. Because I started thinking that a twin flame relationship was non-existent. I started thinking that it was, you know, I was being told by the person I looked up to the most that it was a karmic relationship, a karmic tie. You know, the whole time I was being prepped for her. And our relationship is so much bigger than us. It's not about the pleasure or just the love, you know, it's about the love that we gain and how that radiates to the world. Because that's what the world needs. That's really what we need is love. And it's funny because every once in a while I might go on the tea, I might look at some shit. And you know, like Bro, we're living our life, you know what I mean? And we're really evolving. That's why we can get on here and actually speak it and say it. We're evolving and we're growing. And we just want the we just want that for whoever else is in store for. Whoever these words, whoever is supposed to hear these words and actually take them and value them and apply them to your life. If there's somebody in your life that you that you hold dear and you say you love and you have something that you feel like you need to tell them, always be real with them. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. But for those, especially men who are struggling in their ego. And they're trying to appease their woman and just keep things at bay and quote unquote keep the peace. You will get to a point where shit blows and you're going to have to come out and you will be exposed. But know that through you exposing, choose, continue to choose to honor yourself because your woman will love you through it. She will transform all of that energy, all of that chaos because that is her realm. It's the realm of darkness, the realm of chaos. Mama. mama. You understand what I'm saying? So we're going back to mama. You know, a lot of people, you might have seen the new movie, uh, the new Avatar, Way of the Water. Th that was about a twin flame relationship. That was about the royal black family coming back into one and going back to mama. We're in this physical realm, which is symbolic of Papa, the air element, the physical, what can be seen. Mama's the unknown, the darkness, 
scary, the scary shit. You feel what I'm saying? The things that if you have darkness, it will be projected right back to you. And that can be scary. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was in my room right before we met and I, before she came and she was like my saving grace, I was seeing shadows on the wall. You know, I was experiencing things that are just different, you know? And she came through and really put me at bay. She put my soul at bay and I fought for a while. But as I released more and just accepted, I've been able to see and feel more. And I understand that I don't exist without this woman. I don't exist without this woman. She is my God. You understand what I'm saying? I breathe through her, truly. So that's just something that we just wanted to kind of lay on y'all. You feel what I'm saying? Do you want to, um, because I don't want what you said to be perceived as ignorant, because there's a lot of thoughts going into it. What do you Part. want me to speak on why you feel like you said you don't have any children? Mm, I can speak on it. Oh, oh, yeah. Let me say that, too. I said earlier that I don't have any children. And I want to kind of explain and go into what I mean by that. So, the reason I don't have any children, I've actually spoken on this before, is one, this is my wife, this is my only woman in existence. The children that I have with her will be my only children. And there's a reason for that. This shit is difficult for a lot of people to handle and hold, but the, the point of the matter is, there is an aspect to the matrix that certain parts of yourself whether you think it comes from you or not, children included, can actually be distractions on your path of where you're supposed to go. That's hard for a lot of people to accept. It's hard because people feel like, oh, you're a man and you have these children and you're just supposed to take care of them. A lot of men try and do that and they do it to their demise. They do it to their detriment. And a lot of times they end up not being able to be there for the children anyway because it's not supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? And what you wanna add? Go ahead. Um, within the reason of this, you know, I grew up in a in a broken household, uh, which you would call it when, you know, the father isn't present or the mother cannot be present, but um, you know, I feel as if, you know, valence electrons, if y'all have heard of that, are men and not in a degenerate way, but you will see a man go from home or household to household from different family before you will see a woman because she tends to stay with her children, even in nature. So um, what I'm saying, this is to say that, you know, like you said, the matrix, it, it, everything in the matrix is a, is a distraction outside of what you are destined to fulfill. So when it comes down to what we're speaking on, you know, you within yourself have to be in a real raw level of vulnerability, of oneness to even begin to understand the levels that we are reasoning on because it is affirmed by source. Let me just say that first. So if you're missing the understanding that maybe it was never for you, you probably got a few more lifetimes to run. But understand that, let me just give you a personal example first and I'll explain. If my father was in my household or was in my life through the, throughout my childhood, it would have been way more confusing than already. Why? Because when you have a household um, and, the, and the parents split up, generally another man is gonna come into that household. So now you have a household that has a man, a wife, and children. But you expect a man and a whole other dynamic with his wife, his, his children, to come and be another man in that household, another father figure. Take it, leaving his household without a father figure when his energy is present in that family. So now you've got two masculine energies over there and just a mother and a child over here. No, nope, it's not, no matter if he's like there and both, but he's, his, his energy is being divided. But you got a whole nother man that's stepping in and taking care of these children. So what is he needed for? Things don't happen unless they're supposed to happen. What benefit are you gonna get from a household with a mother and a father that hate each other? A mother and a father that are karmic soulmates or just soulmates, you know what I mean? Like, you're not gonna benefit. The children are not gonna benefit. Children are pure. So we, our only purpose as parents are to preserve their purity. That's it. So if their environment comes with any type of stress, any type of impurity, any type of resentment or confusion, they will become that. Your mother will start to love you through that. Your father will love you through that. You will never get a holistic love from a man or the woman that created you if they don't love each other holistically. So you benefit better in a household with a man and a woman that love each other holistically. My mother remarried. 
a man who took care of us like he was his own children. I didn't even know my dad was my dad until that man passed away. And then again, she remarried. A more holistic man who took us in as his own was at every game, was at every cry, was at every hug, everything that we needed. That is a man. So whether it's my father there or this man here, I got what I needed from a masculine energy within my household without having to deal with what? My degenerate father? A, a man who chose to step away from me. You understand? I'm so you Let somebody up on the live, see what they got to say. But yeah, that's all fast, Queen. Mm -hmm. Let's see. What happened? You, you changed your mind? Okay. Peace, goddess. How are you? Peace, goddess. How are you? Peace, how are you? I'm all right. I wanted to just ask because I I have been following um, you guys for a while. And you. he just said that he doesn't have any children, but he does have other children, right? Did you miss the build of what we were just I understand discussing? what you're saying. The purpose of another man or two men in the household, the one man that stepped in, he's not the biological father. You don't think it's important for the biological father to be there too? Or do you think the two masculine energies would cause problems? What is biology? So right. if we come into this realm and we come into a family that is not a, it is our matrix family, mm -hmm. What does biology even mean at that point? It's about the love that you're getting. A man who is my biological father or your biological father could do you just as dirty as a man off the street. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, people tend to treat their own family just as worse as they treat a homeless person on the street. True, true. Is that simple? True, true. You're talking facts right there. True. And it's like, and it's like, nobody's saying, especially not my husband. You know, a lot of men choose not to take care of their children out of um out of fear of their own ego out of not wanting to take accountability or not wanting to own up to what they truly feel like he is you know what right. i mean but if everybody's so hurt because this 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 matrix makes you believe that oh you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to do that and you're supposed to do this so if you're falling and allowing yourself to subject yourself to what the world believes how are you truly living your life for yourself who is truly benefiting from that because our life is not our mm -hmm. own you understand yeah. All we can do is follow ourselves, follow source within ourselves. And if that takes you away from somebody, then it takes you away from somebody. My husband would not benefit in the dynamic that his, and with the women that he had children. Yeah. They wouldn't benefit from shit because they can't stand each other. These children, his children are already struggling alone with just the women that he had the children with because they're not whole within themselves. They're not even ready to be a mother. They're learning to mother. Mm -hmm through that. Mm -hmm. Now, nobody, there is no book on how to be a mother, but, you know, you're still facing your shadows, and, and that shit is still feeding into the children. You're still hurting for this and looking for that, because you don't know how to step outside of yourself and see that our job here as women is to be a wife and a mother, despite who is around and who does it and who steps in to help us, whether it is the biological father or not, we're supposed to take that help. We are receivers. We are not, we don't, I mean, judgment is whose job you understand right so to sit behind somebody and judge and judge them for deciding not to be where they don't need to be where it's not helping them if he's not saying mm -hmm. these children are not going to be saying if she's not right. saying then children are not going to be fucking saying it's simple That's it's simple and we're not coming from this outside of no experience no i've experienced this shit and he's living it real That's time yeah. you know yeah. so it's not coming from no detrimental place no i I appreciate you explaining that. I get it now. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I'm grateful. Yeah, I definitely have a better. I have a better understanding from what you explained. That was that was that was whole, uh, just a whole fact. Thank you. Yes, Goddess. Thank you for being respectful. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a good one. I appreciate it. I'm almost done, baby. I'm trying to get off of here. I don't know how to do it either. How do I get there? Switch it up. No idea. Just lead a lie. Okay. Switch it up. But yeah, so that that's something that, you know what I mean, a lot of people have a hard time accepting, but it is what it is, you know? 
So at the end of the day, like my queen said, it boils down to for anybody who has trouble navigating within themselves, follow your heart. Follow your heart and be open to allowing source to show you what you need to see. And I think that was the main thing too about being in carbonation and leaving and understanding that, you know, we were giving so much of our energy and belief and faith in one person to tell us how we were supposed to move when you're supposed to develop that in, within yourself, right? So always be true to yourself and you have to learn how to follow that, that whisper. As a man, it's been, it's been difficult to deal with the criticism, the critique that comes with from the world of saying, you had these children deal with this and deal with that, but don't understand the spiritual aspects behind it. Don't, don't understand other mechanics that go on behind it, but it is what it is. It may not be for you to understand and that's okay. You know what I mean? I understand and I forgive you past that. So I appreciate my point for explaining that so elegantly and, and adding that clarity. So with that being said, I really don't have much else to speak on other than I said what I said. If you missed anything, feel free to go back on the live and watch. And best believe that we're going to be coming out. We'll do more lives and stuff, more builds. We have a lot of great music, you know what I mean, that we got coming out. And like I said, my queen is writing a book called Twin Meets Flame. We have a channel that you can join where she releases different content from the book to help people that are trying to navigate through twin flame relationships, soulmate contracts, karma contracts, and relationships and understand how to come out on the other side, deal with the confusion and not feel so lost. And at the end of the day, it's going to, it's going to boil down to you strengthening that muscle within yourself and being open to some help. Every once in a while, we might need some help or some clarity and that's okay. All right. So we wish everybody a, a wonderful night and we'll speak to y'all soon. It's all good.